deal with poverty. Are you here now? And I want to talk specifically about God's will for us, which is the eradication of what? Poverty. Tell me, but that's God's will for us. The eradication of what? Poverty. You know, there are three dimensions to the will of God. If you look at Romans chapter 12, there is the good will of God, there is the acceptable will of God, and there is what? The perfect will of God. Good will of God is something that is good, but it's not God's perfect plan for your life. For instance, it's good to marry, but marriage can kill you. You know? Are you aware? Chet has killed some people. Do you know? Has he killed some people? Yes, sir. You should know now. We even have a recent, recent experience. Uh, marriage can kill people, as good as marriage is. For instance, sometimes when I see some marriages, the way people are celebrating it, there was a recent one of a celebrity music minister, and I saw, I, as I was seeing that, I was interceding for her. You know what I was interceding for her? I have seen that kind of marriage. Celebrity, everything, and I know how it ended. I have seen one. Everybody figuring was, you know, everybody celebrating, it was a talk, and that's how it ended. So I was really praying for her. And I was hoping that the proper foundations have been what? Have been what? Have been laid for that marriage. Because a lot of things, the devil will come after that marriage. Because they want to prove some things wrong. They want to prove God's wrong. They want to prove it wrong that God honors his people. They want to prove the faithfulness of God wrong. And they are wicked people, whether you like it or what, or not. And the truth about marriage is that marriage is not for children. Marriage is intricate. There are challenges in it. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So if you don't understand that, your marriage can collapse in a week. That's what many people in Hollywood don't understand. They think it's the fanfare, the kissing and the sleeping. And after two weeks, they're tired of everything. And the, the same people that went to pump and pageantry to go and get married, go, go and what? Sign divorce papers. Because it's not for children. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? And once the right foundation is not there, what happens to it? It will come down like a pack of cards. Are you here now? So I was praying for her. Because I was seeing a lot of things, even the height of the cake reminded me of another cake. Because in that other relationship, the cake was 12 feet tall. So I was just look, I was interceding. And I'm still praying for that relationship. I'm still praying for it, you know. It needs to work, and I believe it will work. Amen. Amen. And this is in Nigeria. The other one was in America. So, you know. But the funny thing is that many of our Nigerian musicians and uh, film actors have now become like what? Americans. They are now divorcing like them. Then some are marrying multiple wives, you know. So, what even brought us to this discussion, sir? <laughs> <laughs> what brought us there? <laughs> okay, God's will. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you just wonder how did I get to this thing? I'm going to be talking about money. <laughs> so, someone say the good will of God. Then there is the word acceptable will of God. What is the acceptable will of God? That you should marry a Christian. It's an acceptable will of God, is it not? He's the best thing, marry a Christian. But there are people that marry Christians and the marriage ended, true or false. There are people that marry Christians and that marriage is hell, hell on earth. So, marrying any Christian is not the perfect will of God. It is the permissive will of God. That's another thing. Some versions call this permissive. It's the permissive will of God. You need to find out exactly the right person that God wants you to what? To marry. Is, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And, and it's both ways. One is the will of God direction, and then you really spending time to evaluate to be sure that this is the right person for you. This person is compatible with me. Is somebody with me now? Yes, sir. Yes. If not, wahala. Wahala. <laughs> then there is the perfect will of God. And the perfect will of God will have balance, divine direction, and principles. So I say divine direction. And what? Principles. 
you have looked at the principles of choosing a life partner, you have found them out, you have practiced them properly, and you have heard well, and you have balanced it. Because do you know that you can actually hear well, and yet the marriage will not succeed? Are you aware? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because marriage needs to be managed. In fact, Pastor Sarah said that finding a life partner is just 25% of having a successful marriage. To have a successful marriage, 75% is, ma is relationship management. So I'll say relationship management. That is managing your life partner that makes it succeed. Because 25% is not pass rate in any school. Is there any school that you can get 25% and pass? No. Any school is, is not. The minimum I've ever seen is 30 percent. So it's not pass rate. So finally, you can find a life partner and that marriage will end in hell. Because they are principles. Someone say they are principles. Both in entering the marriage, for instance, you can discover the life right partner and destroy that marriage with premarital sex. And find is the right person. You have seen 10 visions, 24 angels appear to you with sword and declared it with the voice of trumpet, this is the Lord. You have only saw 10 visions. Then you now can start speaking with the person. You have already laid the wrong foundation. Or you don't put yourself in check. Maybe you have anger. You don't go and walk on the anger. You can destroy that man. You don't work on financial issues. That wonderful lady can walk out of you. Let's talk about money. Okay, man. That's why I'm talking about marriage today. Whoever is breaking this marriage anointing. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it for later. But, but are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So let me show you the will of God in finances. Thank John 2. This is the perfect will of God. He said, I wish above all things that thou mayest what? Prosper and be what? In health, even as thy soul what? Prosper. So I said, this is the perfect will of God. He said, I wish above what? All things. My highest desire is number one, that you will what? Prosper. And be what? So you should prosper. He has talking about that. You should succeed in all that you are doing and prosper financially. I know a lot of people don't like hearing the word prosperity. Even a lot of men of God are dissociating themselves from boys in the Bible. And that's God's will. Tell, tell everybody, that's God's will for your life. Oh. When you go to heaven, you are not going to see poverty anywhere there. It's not there. In the beginning, it was not what? So. The Bible never said that Adam lacked anything. In fact, the, the amazing thing is that before Adam was created, God prepared a garden for him. Is somebody hearing me now? God prepared the garden, grew the garden, then put the man inside. Why didn't he leave desert for him to start cultivating? The man was born into plenty. That's God's will. Tell them that's God's will for your life. For you to operate in what? In plenty. And everybody said amen. He said, one, I want you to prosper. Number two, I want you to be in health. We've talked about this a lot. I don't want you to be sick in any way. Spirit, soul, or what? Or body. Then number three, I want your soul to prosper. I don't want to talk about soul here. We're talking about spirit and your mind, your will and your emotions. I don't want you having a nervous breakdown. I don't want you having anxiety. I don't want you to be depressed. I don't want you unsaved. I want you saved and I want you sound. And everybody said amen. amen. So this is the perfect will of God. Tell me this is the perfect will of God. So prosperity is there. What is prosperity? The state of nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing wanted, nothing needed. All your needs were met. That's the perfect will of God. And everybody say the amen. amen. Now let's look at the permissive will of God. Deuteronomy chapter 15, as regards finances. Deuteronomy 15, verse 4 to 5. Deuteronomy 15, verse 4. Okay. Actually, if you want, you can actually read from the beginning. But let me see. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, let's just start from verse 4 because of time. Save when there be no poor among you. Okay, let me start from verse 1. If you want, I will try to save. Pay me an idea. Start from verse 1. 
At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. And this is the manner of release. Every creditor that lended ought unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it is called the Lord's release. God told them every year you should cancel everybody's debt. Can you imagine that? Every year. Everybody, there will be no, after every, every seven years I mean, cancel everybody's debt. So after every seven years in Israel, nobody's going anybody. No matter how much it is. This is how to, it should be done. Every creditor shall cancel the loan he has what made to his fellow what Israelite, and he shall not require payment from his fellow Israelite or brother, because the Lord's time for cancelling debt has been what proclaimed. I decree in the name of Jesus a season of supernatural debt cancellation in this house in the name of Jesus. I say I decree a season of supernatural debt cancellation in the name of Jesus. I don't know what you are owing, how you are owing, but supernaturally it will be cancelled in the name of Jesus. I say it will be cancelled in the name of Jesus. I say it will be cancelled in the name of Jesus. There are two ways God can do it. Number one, get the person that you are owing to, cancel it. Number two, provide the resources for you to pay it up. But somebody, this season, your debts are cancelled in the name of Jesus. Now he said, he's not talking about brethren. He said, but you may require payment from a foreigner, but you must cancel every debt that your brother wants owes you. That's what God told them. This was God's plan. Every seven years, cancel your brother's debt. He said, however, there should be no poor words among you. For in the land your God that the land your God is giving to you to possess as your inheritance. He will richly what? He will richly what? Bless you. See, there should be no poor among you. Because in the land that I'm bringing you, he will richly what? Bless you. That's right. If only you fully obey the Lord, your God, and are careful to follow all these commands I'm giving you today. So that, you see, are you seeing the condition that will make sure that there's no poor amongst you? That you fully obey what? The words, the commands that God is what? That the Lord is giving what? You. Okay, let's go to verse 6. For the Lord your God will bless you as he has promised, and you will learn to many nations, but will not borrow from none. You will rule over many nations, but none will rule over you. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. This is the will of God. Next verse. If there is a poor man among you, I you see the text is using. First he said, there will be none, no poor among you. Now he say, if. So, you know, so this should not be among you. If there is a poor man among your brothers in any of the towns, so as if they need to check in the whole Israel to See, they will find poor man. It's a territorial thing because it's meant to be scarce. If there's a poor man of your brother in any of the towns of the land that the Lord God is giving you, do not be hard hearted or tight fisted what, towards your poor what, brother. This is the permissive will. Someone say permissive will. Why is he saying, Are you seeing the word if? Somebody say if. What was the perfect will? The other one, he said, There will be no what, no poor amongst you. So rather be open-handed and freely lend him whatever he wants, he needs. This is a permissive will. Tell you nobody, this is the permissive will of God. Okay, let me just read verse 9. Okay, we'll get to 11. I think it's a good read. Be careful not to have all this wicked thought. The seventh year, the year for cancelling debt is near, so that you do not show ill. He will towards your needy brother and give him nothing. He may then appeal to the Lord against you and you will be found what? Guilty of sin. You understand? So, I know a lot of people were insisting that if you have money, you must give to the boy and all that. God's plan was never to have any word for our money. So, this one is a permissive will of God. He said, give generously to him and do so without a grudging heart. Then, because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in everything you put your hands to do. 
So if you find anyone that still decides to stay poor, well, still help them. You see? Now, coming this verse 11, 1 to go, there will always be the poor in the land. This one is not the will of God. Someone said, This is not the will of God. There will always be the poor in the land. Therefore, I command you to be what? Open handed towards your brothers and towards the poor and the needy. What? In your land. Are you seeing that in this, from verse 1, we are seeing three things. Did you see the three things? What was the first thing? There should be no what? Poor amongst you. Because God will richly bless all of you. Number two, well, if somebody is poor, don't be tight-fisted to them. Praise the Lord. Just help them. Then now you say, but there will also always be poor. The same scripture, three different things. So in this scripture, we have seen the perfect will. There will be no poor. We have seen the permissive will, if there is a poor. We have seen the one that is not the will of God at all, which is that there will be what? Always the poor among you. So we want to find out why, despite the fact that it is the will of God for God's people to be rich and wealthy, not requiring support, why is it that now we still see poor people, especially among the brethren? Because there is said you can have foreigners, but not you. Not you. You shouldn't be in debt. He said, did you notice where he said you shall lend to nations and not borrow? Are you, are you, did you see it? So you should not be in debt. You should not be in debt. You should be the one lending. And everybody said, Amen. Okay. If you go down, it even gets worse, but let's let's not go far. But if you go down, you now see people selling themselves to people. And if thy brother, a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, be sold unto you and serve these six years, and in the seventh day thou shalt let you see, these ones are not just that they are poor, they are lazy. They don't have any other way of eating, they are selling themselves to their brothers. They are seeing this by going down, down, down the ladder. He said, the seventh year you must let him go. And when thou let him go, you shall not let him go what? And thou shalt furnish him liberally out of the flock, out of thy flock, out of thy winepress, of what where it the Lord has blessed you, thou shalt give to him. And thou shalt remember that thou was a born man in the land of what? Egypt. And the Lord thy God redeemed thee if I commanded thee. You know, and so many things. This is a very good scripture to read. He said, even if when you are releasing him, bless him. In fact, the bless itself will make him to end poverty. So you see that the way God brought up his people. He had policies to abolish poverty. Is somebody hearing me now? Yes, sir. Is somebody hearing me now? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Okay, let me show you in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 26, verse 11. Jesus was reiterating this same thing. Matthew 26, verse 11. Can we read it together? One, two, go. The poor, you will always have what? With you, but you will not always have me with you. I will come back to this scripture later, you know, so that we should look at it in context. Let's also look at another scripture, Mark 14, verse 7. So we are seeing this in three different scriptures. Mark 14, verse 7. Can we read it again? One, two, go. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them anytime you want, or you will not always have me with you. You will say, you will not always have the prophets with you. You will not always have me, the Savior, the Redeemer with you. But the poor you will always have with you. So now that you have me, maximize the opportunity to celebrate me. That was what Paul was saying. Because if you know the context of this discussion, then we'll come back to it later. Someone was trying to bless him, a woman, you know, with perfume. And some people started talking, Judas and Company Limited. <laughs> This blessing is too expensive. This seed is too much. This car is too much. We should have sold the car, you know, and given to the poor. Or sold this house. Do you know how many people it will have fed? Because what the woman broke was a perfume, one year salary, one year. She used it to buy perfume. Kakoro. What manner of perfume is that? One year salary of a worker. You used to buy perfume. 
But they are pursuing like that too. No, some of you don't understand because that one, you know, but it offends me. Those are my book used to put a small, small box. Take it away. You wonder what kind of person? Not of my pay to sell me some perfumes. When you told me the prices, I was like, oh, wow, it's a gross guy of a perfume with big men. I said, no, it's just, but we don't know what the price is. It's gross. If I spray this one now and go out, will I be okay? You know, there's some kind of thing you spray, it starts sweating. <laughs> and if I spray it, my stomach will be full. <laughs> We need to see the things. It's just like one day I went to a hotel when we were having our honeymoon. You know, we saw a bar, you know, so it's easy when we went out, you know. So we just say, yeah, let's just check out. The big, uh, they now showed us wine, so we were like, you know, feeling like people that came to where people are buying things. And they told us the cost of the wine. I looked at my wife, we looked at ourselves, we just went out of the bar, went somewhere far away. <laughs> we said we're collecting fresh air. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, the people are like, no, this thing, we should use it for, for the poor. Jesus said, you will always have the poor with you, but you don't have me with you. The poor are important, but I'm, I'm, I don't know if I use this word now. People may misunderstand me. They'll say, I am more important than the poor now. Value me. Value me. But let's keep that. You see, the poor, you always have them. They will never go. They'll be here. But me, I just have three and a half years. I'll soon go. If you don't honor me now, you don't have the opportunity to do it. You know, that's something that happens sometimes. When we meet men and women of God that God has sent to us, some of us don't know that that relationship has a lifespan. True or false? True or false? As if he used to talk about when they were in Abuja, when there were a lot of people they were trying to mentor and help, and they were not available. Those people were too busy. Now, when they now left from Abuja to Enugu, they are now calling them on the phone. And I want to visit you in Enugu. See, why you, you did not come in Abuja? Is now I'm in mean, who you want to come for mentorship. What kind of mentorship? Amen. But let's leave this. We'll talk about it later. Are you still with me now? So, did you get the context? Jesus said, The poor you will always have what with you. But he was putting Deuteronomy what? Deuteronomy what? 15. It's not the will of God, but it is happening. Just like it's not the will of God for people to be sick. But people have, are people sick? Are people sick? Yes, yes. yes, no people are sick. It's not the will of God for people to go to hell. Are people going to hell every day? Yes. But it is you personally that will determine that the will of God will be done in your life. Are you somebody hearing me now? It's you that will determine I will not be sick. I will not go to hell. I will not have a bad marriage. I will not walk in poverty. I will walk in abundance. And everybody say amen. amen. Now Jesus was letting us know that though it was not God's will, we will always have poor people around us. So when I read this, I now asked the Lord why. And he gave me ten reasons, and I want to share them with you. Ten reasons why there will always be poor people among us. In the church, unfortunately. And in the society, unfortunately. Number one, why would you always have poor people amongst us, both in the church and outside the church? It's because many people are stubborn and they will never obey God's instruction. Deuteronomy 15 verse 5. They are stubborn and they will never obey God's word instruction. Remember God told them in verse 4, you don't have poor amongst you. Then in verse 5, he told them what they will do that will make none of them to be poor. Can we read together one to go? If you fully what? Are we, are we here? If you fully what? Amen. Obey the Lord your God and are careful to follow all these what? Command that I will give to you today. Okay, go to verse 4. Some people are just coming in. They want out with us. Verse 4. Carry it together. One to go. However, there should be what? No poor among you. For in the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess, 
as your inheritance. He will richly what? Bless you. The next verse. What is the condition for the rich blessings of God? Can we together want to go? If only you what? Fully obey the Lord your God and are careful to what? Follow all these commands that I'm giving you what? Today. Can you give me another translation? Maybe message or NLT. We need to get this. But only if you... Okay, go to verse 4. Let me see what this is about verse 4. Let me see. There must be no poor people among you because God is going to bless you lavishly in the land that God, your God, is giving you as what? An inheritance. Your very own what? Land. Somebody here, God is giving you your very own land. Amen. Your very own business. Amen. Your very own job. Amen. Something that would settle you for life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. But only if you listen, what's the condition for you being for there be no poor. Only if you listen obediently to the voice of the Lord your God, diligently observing every word, commandment that I want, command you to do. You know, when we preach about finances, people get offended. People say a lot of things. Let me tell you, if we don't teach you the principles of God, you'll never be rich. Because you'll be breaking his laws. I hear what I'm saying, and you're going to have problems. Why do we teach this thing so that you know the principles and abide by them and eradicate poverty from your life? And everybody said amen. amen. So the number one reason is that there are stubborn people that will never obey God. So all these arguments about tithing and is getting you to more poverty. Argument about sowing seeds, about giving, is getting you to more poverty. Argument about all is getting you to more poverty. In some places, argument about working. No people are against work. They say, you know, they are proposing socialist ideologies where, you know, get Nigerian well, let's share it equally, you know. You will finish it and nothing will be left. Any nation that does not produce is heading towards what? Poverty. I'll listen to Pastor today. That's our problem. You will eat and eat and eat the sovereign wealth until nothing is what is left. Just check between a person just tell you and now how the sovereign wealth fund has gone. It's almost finished. True or false? Do you remember excess crude? Excess crude account. How much was in it? Is anything still there now? Is empty. I wiped it. I was still wiping it. A nation that has crude oil eh, is importing petroleum. A nation that has refineries that it is still servicing. Every year they spend money on top around maintenance, is it not? I don't know what the thing is maintaining. I think it's maintaining some people's pockets. Billions. And we're still importing for what kind of nation is this? We import everything, including toothpick. <laughs> now you can do it over here. It's amazing. Whenever we obey God's, disobey God's principles, we will always tend to poverty. And there are many principles. For instance, the principle of labor and productivity is one of God's laws. When God created Adam, he put him in the garden to work 10 days. It's God that originated work. And work will not end here. Don't deceive yourself. Don't think when you get to heaven, you just sit down and be singing. Hallelujah. 24 hours is a lie. Go and read my, my time in heaven. They are doing development. They are building buildings. They are building mansions. There are parts of heaven that are still virgin. Is somebody hearing me? <laughs> this is the same that when we get to heaven, you know the parts that the to still be in the heaven. The part where they are building. Any place that they project, that's where we will be. I will add. When Jesus passed on, he would tell us to sing again. He was always building something. Some some church will be in the fire side. Some will be in the wood side. Others will be project side. <laughs> but, but it's true. Pastor said that when Jesus took him to heaven, or an angel took him to heaven, that they stopped him. They, God asked the angel to slow down the speed 
So, because you can get to heaven like this. So, they took him slowly through space. He was passing through the stars. So, he realized that this thing called heaven is not a spiritual place, it's a physical location. It's at the highest point of the universe. It's called the North Star. In some clear nights, you can see him. He's the top one star, brightest at the top, at the top of the universe. After the, you've crossed the Milky Way, you pass what they call the black hole. The, the next thing you see is heaven. Satellites have seen it. Satellites have bumped into it some years ago. It went viral now. Some satellites have bumped into a city where there were celestial beings were flying around. Satellites have bumped into heaven. Miss satellites have lost, missing, got lost on it. That's the same way people have drilled into hell. Hell is a physical location. It's not a phenomenon. Mm. It's a physical location. It's in the heart of the earth. People have drilled into it. Some Russian scientists and some people have also seen hell. So, this is a physical location. So they slowed down the speed and they dropped him in front of the gates. And guess what? He looked what he is inside. And the angel told him this city was built. God built this city. You know the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Heaven was built. He's still under construction. Is it not what Jesus said? I am going to prepare a place for you. Is it not what he said? They are still building mansions. So, some of you that are engineers, when you go to heaven, you should be in construction. We'll still be working. And it's not only in heaven that you work. The Bible talks about, you know, the, the cloud of witnesses. Many of the people that go to heaven, there's job distribution in heaven. Some are even sent back to the end on special assignments. Yes. Many people have seen, had encounters, they've seen Joseph, they've seen this, they've seen a lot of encounters. You don't just see, you just go there, sit, carry a bona over, over, bam, bam, forever. forever. God is the one that originated work. Are you getting me? Work is not from the devil. Work is from God. In fact, the word work needs to become. The more you are working, the more you are becoming what God wants you to be. And everybody say amen. Yeah. The faster you embrace work, the better for you. And everybody say amen. Yeah. Hello, everybody say amen. Oh. Yeah. It is the willing and the obedience that will eat the good of the land. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Not the disobedient, not the stubborn. That are being arguing, busy arguing about the word of God, arguing against the principles of God. If you are willing, if you willingly obey, you will feast like kings. I'm sure the obedience like this scripture. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but don't think that in that period, by the grace of God, that you die though. You will work very well though. Yeah. Huh? You will work very well. <laughs> if you don't work, hunger will kill you very well. <laughs> you better know it though. Because the possibility of stealing will be reduced. And everybody say amen. amen. Second reason why people are poor, why we always have poor among you, because many people have a small vision and a low self esteem and will never see the best for themselves. It is what you see that you get. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Very fast, please. What you see is what you get. If you see nothing, you get what? Nothing. Is somebody with me now? For as he thinketh in his heart, so what? Is he? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you don't begin to think of greatness, think of wealth, think of increase, it will not fall on your head like black cherries, like ripe cherries. It's what you see. Tell everybody, it's what you see that you will get. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14. God was speaking to Abraham. He said, look to the north, south, east, and west. As far as your eyes can what? See, I have given you. So, what do you see? How do you see yourself in the next five years? How do you see yourself in the next... You have a vision. If you don't have a vision for your life, you don't have a vision for financial growth, it will not fall on you like ripe cherries. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you want to grow well, you must have a vision for it. Because even if you receive accidental wealth, you will accidentally discharge it. How would you see that? Have you ever noticed that when money enters your hand that you don't have plans for, that's the way it goes. 
Have you noticed it? You start spending carelessly. Start buying things you don't need. Start giving people that you don't feel like. Somebody pay. Something is 1,000 naira. Just uh, just keep, keep change. Keep change of 3,000. What You don't have money. You plan. But when you have a plan for that money, will you give it anyhow? Even if it's one naira change, which will you fight it for it? That's why, quote unquote, rich people appear stingy. They have plans for that money. Yes. Poor people just waste the money because they don't have any plan. So suppose they know when the money comes, I make a plan. It's not true. Make the plan first. Is somebody hearing me now? Yes, now you don't have is the time to dream. Dreaming is free. Nobody charges anybody for dream. I've never seen them arrest somebody that's not paid for dream. But dream is too much. <laughs> Dreaming is free. You know, when you don't have, it's the best time to dream. So that when the money comes into your hand, you know what to do what? With it. That's why you see rich people, when they want to give out their money, maybe they are giving it to other rich people. While a good is looking for somebody to help the poor, he's giving to Bill Gates. Why don't you give all that, the, poor, the poor the money directly? Actually, they'll finish it. He knows this guy has a plan to help the poor. So he's giving it to you because if you can manage what? Traditions. He has a foundation. That's why more than I just waiting for money. Make plan, set up things. Money will come and everybody say amen. Because provision always follows what? Vision. No vision, no what? No vision, no what? No vision, no what? Ephesians 3 verse 20. Paul was speaking. He said, to him who is able to do what? Exceedingly abundant, above all you can ask or what? Imagine. So God can bless you above your prayer request and above your vision. You don't have a vision, you don't have a request, forget the blessing of God. So we must begin to dream big. You must break that poverty mentality. It doesn't matter what has happened in your family. Decide to be different. Decide to be different. Tell everyone, decide to be different. Break out of that place. History has it that, statistics has it that 60% of millionaires we have are first generation millionaires. That means they were born in what? Poverty. But they dreamt their way out of that poverty. Oh, I've been reading some things recently and it amazes me. Many of the cars we drive, the people that created them were poor people. I've seen them. Just go and browse the origin of these cars. Volvo, um, Bob, BMW, Volkswagen, um, BMW, Rolls Royce. Poor people. That's what they're dreaming. When they had nothing. One was built by a poor fisherman. Another one was poor. I didn't see anyone when they say rich anybody. These cars you're driving now. Tell your neighbor, break out of that circle with your dreams. Tell the person, dream big. Dream. Paint pictures, snap pictures, the kind of house you want to live in, the kind of life you want to have, the kind of business you want to do. Put it down, write it somewhere. The kind of ministry you want to have. That's where your growth financially starts. And I see you growing in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You know, don't allow hardship to, to shut down your brain. Don't allow it to shut down your spirit. If the devil succeeds in making you not to dream, he has finished you. Because the language of God is the language of visions and what? Dreams. That's what your picture says. That's the language God speaks. The language of what? Visions are When God wanted to make Abraham to have children, he gave him visions. In the daytime, he said, count the sun. In the nighttime, he said, count the stars. So 24 hours, God made sure his mind was busy. Physically, he had no children. But God made sure his mind was what? Busy. Thinking about what? Children. And that was not enough. God came and gave, changed his name. His name was Exalted Father. Yet he didn't have any child. Even that one was bad enough. God now was the problem by calling him what? Abraham, father of many nations. You can imagine the neighbors in the morning. They will want to call his name in the morning. A B O A B Abraham, father of 
of any nations without even one nation. And that's not. That's not laughing. But every day they called that name, they were confirming the prophecy. Mm. Because you shall have what you want, what you see. Every day they said that word, faith was rising in him. Because faith comes by what? Yeah. Is somebody here now? Yes, sir. Are, you, are you with me now? Yes, sir. So you want to be rich, you got to be dream. Shut down your dreams, you'll be poor. Yes, Why do we have poor people amongst us? No dream. Yes, no vision. Yes, no hope. Some only complaints. And can you want to, uh, if not that my father did, <laughs> if not for my mother, I would have gone to school. If not, I didn't go to school. Who told you everybody rich went to school? You know many of the great pastors we celebrate, they don't go to school. They didn't go to university now. Just me, I didn't go to university. But they didn't go to university. Can I even go to university? One seminary. Even in the house, I went to seminary. I didn't even finish. did only, I think, one and, one and a half years and came back. So who told you you have to go to school to be great? Is somebody hearing me now? Who told you you have to go to school to be what? In fact, some of these great names we have mentioned, many of them train themselves, home training, home schooling. Some of the greatest inventors, they didn't go to school. Now, so why are you using school to give examples? They give excuse. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Is somebody still here now? The third reason why you always have poor people among you because many people are too stingy to prosper. They are too stingy to prosper. The Bible says there is seed that spread it abroad and yet increases. But there is seed that goes back more than is what necessary and sends tended towards what poverty. You can put it up in the book of Proverbs. You don't know how to give. You don't know how to invest your money. You just know how to hold it and look at it or eat it. You will be poor. Because until you give, you will not what? Receive good measure. Someone say good measure. Press down. Somebody say press down. Shake it together. Somebody say shake it together. And running what? Over. It includes giving to God. It includes investing. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Let us know that it's to the measure that you give, to that measure you receive. If you sow sparingly, you reap what? Sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you reap what? Bountifully. The pastor was given an example, wonderful example with this. He said, for instance, if you want to sow something like corn, you want to reap bags of corn. <laughs> and you just go and get like 10 seeds of corn and sow it. Are you going to reap bags of corn? You will not. You want to reap trailers of corn. You will sow bags of corn, is it not? Yes. So let me do a little agriculture. Found out to be able to sow enough corn in for 40, 400 mounds that will, that will you know, mounds of whatever. You need one bag of corn. And that bag of corn has more than a thousand seeds. For you to be able to sow 400 mounds, my own mounds. Mm -hmm. It's not one handful. So if you decide to be stingy, eh, I don't want to spend money this day, and then I'm not, uh, it's getting too expensive. You just bring one cup, put one, one seed. In fact, unfortunately for you, I don't know. You know, even when we are planting corn, when we are growing up, how do you plant corn? You plant one seed. And you will plant like three or four in one hole. And I used to wonder why. Yeah, because there are some sniper or cocoa. You know what is called a cocoa? Yeah. Hen, sniper hen. They can locate the corn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so why do they put me? If they get this one, they will miss this one. Mm -hmm. One will jump in. So, if they are stingy, nothing for you. Is someone with me now? Yes, Hello, is someone with me? Yes, if you're not ready to give, you're not ready to invest, you're not ready for wealth. And everybody said amen. amen. So, that's part of why people will be poor, because they are very what? Stingy. Number four, because many are too prayerless to prosper. Yes, Romans 4, verse 17. When you sow, one of the keys to, especially when you sow in the kingdom, and even when you sow physically, one of the keys to make sure that what you sow, you reap the harvest, is by what? Prayer. It's prayer that you use to call out the things that you have sown. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. He said, 
It is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom you have believed. Before God, even God that what? That raises the dead and collect things that what? Be not as though they were. When you finish sowing money finances, one of the tools, I'll talk about this maybe I think by Sunday or so. One of the tools of harvest is prayer. Somebody say prayer. You must call forth your word, your harvest. Why is there a lot of believers so and they get their poor? They know how to sow, they don't know how to what? To reap. Prayer is one of the keys to reaping. Calling forth your harvest. Calling it out of darkness. Calling it out of the realm of the spirit into the physical realm. So it's not enough to sow. You must know how to what? Harvest. Just carry, you know, young, young um, you know, what you call it, stems. Sow everywhere. Cover maybe 1,000 1, blocks. And when you finish, after, depending on the species, maybe the one that is eight months, after eight months, the tin has gotten a harvest for you. And you stay in your house and refuse to go to the farm. Are you going to make any money? No. Are you going to make any money? No. Will, they, will the cassava harvest itself and come to your house? No, sir. Uh, hello, will it harvest itself and come to your house? No, sir. If you don't go out there and get it, two things will happen. If you don't rotten in the ground, or people that think, people that are serious will reap it for you. Everybody say the amen. amen. And everybody say the amen. amen. I was talking to a friend about agriculture. He said, forget that thing, it doesn't work. I said, what do you mean by it doesn't work? He said, we invested heavily and planted cassava, this one, that one. I said, so what happened? He said, no, we did not make anything. I said, we need to make something. He said, eh, some people came and told us that, you know, by the time we harvest it, we won't make much. And if we sell it in the ground, we will not make much. I said, so what happened? He said, so we did not go at all. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> if you did not have time to sell it on our sell it what? At least, hold your cost price. Mm -hmm. and, and the truth that I've made a little somebody, you make more than that. What kind of madness is that? And now you're not telling me it does not work. It's you that does not work. <laughs> You know what? But that's the truth. People saw, ah, pastor is sacrificed. After you went to sleep, you didn't come to harvest. You just get minimum or nothing. And everybody said, Amen. You want to be rich as a Christian, you must learn to want to pray. Tell your neighbor, you must learn to pray. You must learn to bind the devil. Because whenever you sow, there are things that come to see. Is it not? There are birds of the earth. Is it not? There are foxes. There are all kinds of things. There are beasts of the earth. You must learn to bind them. Then you must learn to reap your harvest. That's why a lot of Christians, even though they are giving up hope because they are prayerless. Are you still with me now? Hello? Are you still with me? Are you happy or are you angry? Are you angry with me? Okay. Number five. Let's move very fast. Why are people poor, even in the church? Because um, many are too unwise and unknowledgeable to prosper. They don't know what to do after they have sown how to reap. Because one of the ways to reap is wisdom. Someone say wisdom. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3. Some people go and carry their money and invest in a business they know nothing about. And they are hoping to make money. The next year, everything goes down the drain. And so start blaming God. Is it God that was your problem? Was it God that was your problem? Everybody's going into keke. Carry your money. Your life savings. Keke. <laughs> like keke, my baby, I used to carry your money home. Everybody's going to box. You run, enter. You've not surveyed the thing. For instance, there are businesses that need your time. If you don't have time, don't go there. True or false? There are businesses you can't trust people to manage for you, especially when you're starting. True or false? For instance, transportation business, you must have time. And you must know what they're doing. Ah, we had a tanker that for seven years, we no water. Every day, story. Every if tire did not bust today. It will be engine that we know. It will be the one spending. 
But can you mention that nonsense? I called my brother, I said, pack the car, pack it, pack it, pack it. He said, I said, pack it. He said, devourer. I don't believe in devourers. Every good story, if you don't spoil a night man, it is not in Tansekuni. Mm. If you go one tree and spoil, mm. and it is my money, you used to release it. Why don't you use your money, driver? <laughs> and you're looking at the driver, he's going fat. But well, yeah, the car is spoiling. So, going there, Mela is something. Mela is something. I don't want to say a bad word. Drivers, they are different species of human beings. I worked with them. I was conductor for six months. Almost every driver has a bad habit. At least one. Is it that they smoke, or they drink, or they womanize, or they eat too much, or they do all? <laughs> the average driver, his money never gets to the house. True or false? True or false? Even that money is stealing from me. I don't be a ruler. I don't be a ruler. I've worked with them now. They must have one. The one that was born again, his own was eating. Was <laughs> a glue top. The guy has knife, special knife for cutting orange in the car. We're going to get some in here, man. As they put the, the drop inside the water, the guy eats the first round. As they're about to leave, he will eat the second round. Then he will buy like three or five oranges and two pop up. Yeah, they drag here, baby, thing. All the money, actually. How much can this guy? This is a spirit. Spirit of wickedness. The wife is there hoping something, nothing comes up. It's just a little chaos business. That's what sustains the family. And the guy is very fat. Okay, I'm not like this. Another one we hired, that one is Akuracha. Early in the morning, I'm drunk with Google. How can somebody be drunk by 6 a.m.? When he's coming to work, he's walking like this. The guy is floating. One day he drove a tipper through the wall. He thought there was a road there. Through the wall. First thing in the morning. I still remember one day he came to work. My father saw his eye. He said, bro, slide down. See. Slept for how many hours? <laughs> Don't drive my car. Mm. Drove it through the wall. He was angry. You don't have time. Actually, your money, your life savings, you back to village. So you must have knowledge. By wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, it is what? By knowledge, the next verse, is filled with, the rooms are filled with what? Good things. You want to enter a business, go and study what? About it, whether you can do or you cannot do. If you can respect yourself and put your money in the bank. And everybody say amen. amen. In the forex way, all the forexians wave your hands. I want to do forex, I want to do forex. You not end up in the forest. <laughs> we just say, I'm using robots. You put it. Robots betray you and you go to sleep. <laughs> By that I woke up. <laughs> wisdom is profitable to what? Always get wisdom. Now we say get wisdom and with all your getting, get what? You must understand that. Until you get to the point of understanding, you will not be you will not be productive. But you get to the point of what the point, I, I think it's uh, NLT we put up this. I think there's one that talks about keeping abreast of facts. I think it's NLT. This is um, Please help us get it. You must have current information in that area. Right? So I say current information. Current information. You must be abreast of what? Facts. Think. Check Living Bible or Amplified. True knowledge rooms are filled with also awesome. check check another one. I think in that message or there's one that says by keeping abreast of facts. 
So you must have the correct information. That's why, for instance, you're a doctor, we have to go for updates. There are current practices. Medicine changes every day. You're an engineer, it changes every day. You're a pastor, it changes every day. Please keep moving now so you get it. Check Amplify, check message translation. By keeping abreast of facts. Hallelujah. Oh, my time. I need to run now. Are, are you still here now? So many are too unwise and unknowledgeable to prosper. They are just guessing. And it's a terrible thing to do. The Bible says that the labor of a fool will be a For he knoweth not how to get toward the city. And what is the result? He returned toward the village. You want to enter any area of business, study about it. Tell your neighbor, study about it. If you don't have knowledge, you will not make wealth. Then you only lose money. Number six, because many are too lazy to prosper. You know, there's what they call lazy bones. They are too lazy to prosper. The Bible says that the lazy man does not go out and say there's a lion in the city. Does not go out. He's a lion in the city. He always has what? Excuses. I see some young people nowadays, I'm shocked. They will sleep from morning to night. Especially men, men, men. So men will cheese from morning to night. Are you not? Are you crazy? But you are married. Jeez, from morning to night. You need to be thrown in the jail. <laughs> Life imprisonment. And then pull up. Collect somebody's daughter and start stabbing the person. You need to lock you up. Or go to psychiatry. You see man, full grown man. From morning to night, I'm out of draft. Where I get the real nigga. The real nigga. Married man. That's a crime. The Bible said that he that cannot provide for his wife, his family, is worse than what? Is this your laptop hanging or what? Is somebody here now? Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4, please, very fast. Proverbs 20, verse 4. Very fast, please, please, please. A slug that does not plow in what? Season. So at harvest time, he looks for, but finds what? Nothing. Nothing. Give me King James. So there's a time for everything. You're a student, there's a time to read. No small way to do funny things. You don't read, then after exam, when you are failed, you start reading. It's not a useless student. Have you been there before? After exam, you start reading. After failing. What is the purpose of the reading? It's a useless reading. The slug that will not plow by reason of cold. Uh -huh. Therefore shall he beg what in harvest and have what? No. You know when I, I read this, I remember was how many of you read day by day? Is it day by day? The story of the ants and the grasshopper. How many of you remember that story? You remember the story? During the planting season, the grasshopper was playing music with his guitar. Yes. The ant was carrying bags of food, he was laughing at him. He said, why are you wasting your time? See green grass everywhere. What is this nonsense you are doing? <laughs> so you can say, if I don't do like this, I'll see what if I don't do like this. They were just packing the food. And during the cold season, when cold started, first of all, the guy had no house and had no food. And he remembered the ant. As he was just getting there, the ant just closed the door. Bah. And cold and hunger finished the gas over. So whenever I read this story, I remember it. The slogan does not work. Plow. When, when winter sets in, therefore he begs in the harvest and has what? Nothing. Nothing. There's a time to walk. If you don't walk then, you will beg. And you may have what? Nothing. So many people have wasted their data and their youth. I don't know, but I say this with all sense of, um, I don't know what to say, but when you see an old man at eight still doing conductor, mm -hmm. conductor, call, chere, 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 and 80 years, that's a man that wasted his youth. 
Colombia. Someone trying to drive the car. 75. You can't even see. You don't know it's in the middle of the road. You should be in Bahamas. Rest him or going for a move with your wife. How long should you be at that age? Is somebody hearing me? Yes. Not hustling, jumping boss, fighting with young men. It's my turn, it's my turn at 85. I know there's dignity in labor, but there are some things you see, you know this person has been irresponsible. You will not be like that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tell your neighbor, start walking now. Start walking. Jesus said, I walk while there is, is still what? Day. Night comes when no man can walk. Even at that age, you get up, your body refuses to get up. True or false? Yes, you know some of you just wake up in the morning, just jump out of bed like my, my boy. I know right here, yeah, David. Just wake up, yeah, come, I need bread. <laughs> 2 a.m. <laughs> I know right here, yeah. You know there's an age you get to. You don't wake up. If you don't wake up anyhow, I have a stroke. There's an age you get to, you open one eye. Then gradually open the other one. You say, okay, I'm still here. Then raise your hand. Oh, no, it's still working. Raise the other one. Then bring that one leg. Then bring that one leg. Then quietly get up. You know, even at this age, I don't jump out of bed. There's a way you wake up, you have a headache. True or false? Who said some of us that you know stay to the night? But as a young blood, you can do anything. So now you have the energy to walk. Tell your neighbor, walk. That is why what this generation of politicians are teaching Nigerians is very bad. Because most of them achieve great things at the young age. I listen to a person at 42, they are retired. At 42, he has been president of Nigeria. He was head of state at 42. He said at 42, he became unemployed. In fact, not unemployed, unemployable. Nobody could have put an employer ahead of state to do what? So we have to go to farming. That's the only thing you could do. We have to now start farming. At 42, this president has been president at 30 something. Go on and be president at 25. Now, the generation that is their turn, people that are going to the grave are still blocking the road. <laughs> There's a prayer I don't want to pray. <laughs> did you know what happened in Ghana? Yes, sir. Did you, have you heard of Jerry Rollins? Yes, Maybe that's what Nigeria did. Yes, Wipeout. Generational wiping out of road blockers dug in the danger. 85. Your hand is shaking like this. Your hand is shaking. Mm -hmm. You are you? Moving in your pants mm -hmm. and you are still blocking the road. <laughs> But you must get your PVC <laughs> and drive them what? Out. Out. And everybody say amen. amen. Number seven, is that where we are? Why are many people still poor? Why don't we have the poor amongst us? Because many are too impatient to prosper. Yes, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. Many are too impatient to prosper. The Bible says that the farmer in the book of James waited patiently for the fruits. Many people want to make quick money. There's nothing like that. It's the fastest way to hell. Quick money, quick money. They take shortcuts. I don't know how many of you, you know, have taken shortcuts before. Have you noticed that many times it ends up being long? <laughs> it's not a long cut. Raise your hand. Shortcut, you now fall inside water. <laughs> has anybody, has that put you before? Those days you used to walk to school, you now take shortcut, go through somebody's compound, <laughs> and dogs start chasing you. No, always give me King James, please. Be not what? Slothful, but be what followers of them who through what Hebrews chapter six verse who through what faith and what patience inherit what the promise. True wealth is built. Tell your neighbor, true wealth is built. You don't block it. 
don't pluck it from mango tree just like that. It is built stage by stage, one step at what? At a time. Why are people poor? They don't want to take time to build anything. I see young men in the ministry. They want to start church today and pastor 10,000 member church today, today, today. So when they check, today it did not grow. Two members. Next tomorrow, three members. Next tomorrow, five members. The seventh month, it grew down. <laughs> from, <laughs> from five to one. They say, I don't think I'm called. <laughs> I said no. Now you're having challenges. No, doesn't mean you are not called. Amen. In fact, it's even a sign that you're called because the enemy will never oppose you when you're not doing anything meaningful. True or false? Yes. I said no. I don't think I'm called. Go and listen to the story of all the people that got there. They didn't just, you know, get there suddenly. I like your quote by Longfellow. He said, the height by great men reached was not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their friends slept, toiled deep into what? The night. I will never forget that statement. You want to excel in your academics? It's not sudden flight. You get on the exam, you want to cram the whole textbook, you're going to, your brain will crash. Has it happened to you before? Yes, We've done it now. Yes, what happens when you see the paper? You just go blank. <laughs> the paper will just take light. <laughs> there was one paper we took physiology. As we saw the paper, everybody fell asleep. I'm not joking, people started sleeping. The thing knocked everybody out. Even they had slept for 15 minutes. They now woke up and looked at the paper. Because when you look at it, you are seeing line, line, line in this paper. People are just leaving the hall. The brain has crashed. Let us fall down if you want to come out of it. That will not be your case in Jesus' name. When you see people have taken time to study, they've read that thing, they've internalized it, they've digested it. It doesn't matter how you put the question, they, they can answer it. True success is built. Tell your neighbor it's built too. Is what? Built. Tell your neighbor true wealth is built. That's why you need to go and read, read the stories of men that have built enterprise. Read their stories. P.T. Bannon, the one that started Circles. He circles points down several times. He started afresh again. He points down several times. He started afresh. And yet he became one of the wealthiest men in America. This is Donald Trump that became president. You know how many times he has filed for bankruptcy? Donald Trump. You know how many times he has filed for bankruptcy? But he will always bounce back. Tell everybody, you must learn to be patient. See the key, faith and what? Patient. Believe in yourself. Believe in your dream. Keep pushing. Keep waiting. Keep pushing. One day, you're going to break through. And everybody say amen. amen. And everybody say amen. amen. Are you here now? Number what now? Okay. Number eight. Because they are too weak to fight the devil off their money. They are too weak to fight the devil off their money. Psalm 68 verse 29 to 31. If you're going to be rich, especially as a Christian, you must bind the devil. You must never be tired of binding him. You must never be tired of fighting him. If you look at Zechariah chapter 1, he's talked about the four months. He said, these ones have come to scatter this Egypt. They didn't say scatter Egypt. They say they have come to scatter what? Judah, Jerusalem. They've not come to scatter God's people. So when you're in a business, you're going to have opposition. The devil doesn't want any believer to have money. So you're going to have opposition. Verse 30. He said, because of your temple, kings will bring you presents. You may start well. But he said, but we'll build the company of what? Spare men. The body of booze with what? The crowd of people. Till everyone submit himself with what? Pieces of silver. He said, scatter the men that love war. If you don't continue to buy the devil off your money, you will never have money. 
and is a continual thing. Next verse. Then princes shall come out of Egypt, and Ethiopia will stretch out her hands to God. If you don't buy the devil off your money, you don't break his hold off your finances, you don't break his hold off your business, you don't break his hold off your ministry, you will never be rich. That thing will never move forward. The devil will always attack it. You know, that's the frustration of some Christians. And walking so hard, nothing is working. You have an enemy. You must put him in his place. If not, you will never succeed. Is somebody hearing me now? Is somebody hearing me now? The unbelievers will do the same thing. He will help them. Whiskey will sing song. It will sell. You will sing. If your neighbor will not buy. <laughs> They won't even know you sang. <laughs> Sometimes you listen to the song, yes. They are singing on the other side. Po, 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 po. Nothing. They say it's platinum record. But one day, what's platinum about this noise? I can start mentioning names. Some of the guys that are winning Grammy. And what, what did they sing? I've listened to their song. Nothing. Look at the person himself. Nothing. It's not that he's fine. It's not that he's fine. You will your fineness. And you have an enemy. Tell anybody you have an enemy. You must learn to what? God told Kerenagi, he said, I'm not the one that's making you not to prosper. He said, there's a God of this world that is running the systems of this world. He said, if you want to prosper, you must learn to what? Buy it. My pastor taught me, see, anytime things get tight for you financially, these forces at work. In this future already, there are two forces. There are the ones that stop money from coming to the peace of the matches. Then there are the men that's, that's, that love war. They scatter your money when they come. That's when your car will have accident. That's when your injury will not. That's when your child will be sick. You just got money. They are job to scatter that money. You want your money to be together, you must bind them. Someone say, bind them. The Bible calls them in Zechariah the four horns. They are job to scatter Israel. Scatter, you can put it up, scatter. But you must learn to call for heavenly capital. There are angels that know how to bind these things. Fray them, break them in pieces, drive them out, and help you to build your financial destiny. You must know that Christian prosperity is a warfare. Tell your neighbor it's a warfare. Oh. Tell your neighbor it's a warfare. Oh. You don't know how to pray as a Christian, you will be poor. And I lifted up my eyes, the right chapter 1 verse, and I saw the whole form on verse 19. Very fast, please. And I said to the angel that talked with me, what are, what be this? The man had to speak broken. What be this? <laughs> because you don't understand what he's saying. Because you know, the previous verse, God has said, my city is true prosperity, shall spread abroad. So money came, and he saw some dangerous things. He said, now what be this? <laughs> And then said, these are the horns that have what? Scattered where? Scattered number two? Scattered number three? Do you see Egypt there? Do you see Persia there? Do you see Babylon there? They don't scatter them. It's you they scatter. You want to use the stadium, all the forces will come. They want to use the stadium, they give it to them free. And even assist them to mess up people. Is somebody hearing me now? Yes, sir. Verse 20. Verse 20. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Hallelujah. Yeah. God always has any, a solution to any strategy of the devil. Is somebody yeah. hearing me now? Yes, then I said, What come these to do? <laughs> Another problem. <laughs> I said, Yes, one great money. I'm seeing one. I'm seeing carpenter. Which kind of vision is this? He said, these are the ones that have what? Scattered Judah. So that what? No man what? They lift up their head. Their job is to make sure you don't cry. You don't go to the next level. That you keep begging. That your business does not expand. He said, but these are come to fray them. You know what is to fray? Have you seen where they use soft, this um, plane to play wood? To as they trash them, break them in pieces. To cast out the ones, to throw them out. That way, competitor. There are forces that is their job to throw them out. I hear what I'm saying. Yes, 
in that your market to throw them out, in that your neighborhood to throw them out, in that your office to throw them out. To cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which did what? Lift up their horns over the land of Judah to scatter it. Whatever is scattering, God will scatter it in this season in the name of Jesus. Anything scattering your business, say God will scatter it in this season in the name of Jesus. Anything trying to scatter your ministry, God will scatter them in this season in the name of Jesus. Anything trying to scatter your career, God will scatter them in, this, in the name of Jesus. As they said to the guy that started McDonald's, he said something crazy. He said, in the business world, is a jungle. It's a place of dog eat dog. They understand it, and that's how they fight. We don't understand it, we are too nice, and that's why we are, we are, we are what? We now become the victims. You must learn to bind. You must learn to stand strong. You must not allow the devil to stop you. Is somebody here now? Many of the great programs we have done and things we have achieved, some of them, the day, some of them, a week before, no money, everywhere locked up with padlock and online proof. We have to fast, pray, break things. Because we know that devil. And that's why we're not slow. So we are too slow. You see a business opportunity. It's not going to move fast. It's not moving like snail. You collect it. Move fast. When you say open door, go through. Is somebody hearing me now? Tell your neighbor, you must know you have an enemy that doesn't want you to have money. So you must get violent about your wealth. Because right from the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered what? Violent. And the violent taken by what? By force. Some of you are too nice to be blessed. They give you contracts. They say, submit proposal. You take him one month. Whether somebody submitted it on the night before itself, the thing came out. And you want to get anything. It's impossible. Am I talking to somebody now? Am I talking to somebody now? Yes, sir. You are believing God for money. You don't have your account number in your phone. You're a joker. You are what? A joker. My account number, I have it as SMS, I have it as WhatsApp chat, I have it as email. Anyone you want? I don't like some people like my wife, they memorize their own. Do you have a pen? 080. <laughs> what do you know they carry last? That is somebody that is serious about money. Tell everybody you need to be serious about money. If not, you will stay poor. Let's wrap it up. Number nine. Why are many people poor? Because they are too foolish to follow wise people mm. and wise counsel. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. You want to prosper. Look for people that are prospering. Don't be foolish. You want to build house. You're going, who are you going to talk to? Someone that has not built house before. To teach you how to build house. You want to start church is social media. You want to get advice. People that have never passed out before. You know, these guys, I don't listen to them. Who can advise you? You want to advise me on pastor? Have you passed out before? See, the person that gives you advice on marriage, a single guy. Single at 45. And when you're married, when are you one? <laughs> Can we read together one to go? He that walketh with the wise becometh wise, but a companion of fools shall be what? Destroyed. Who are fools? The Bible says a fool says there's no God. Number one. Who are fools? People that have little what? Understanding of the subject matter. So they are medical fools, they are business fools, they are different type of fools. They are marriage fools, they are pastoral fools. They are evangelistic fools. Because fool is not an insult. You mean someone that doesn't have what? Understanding of the subject. They are estate fools. There are people that are fools as wrong as land is in, and they don't know anything. Oludu, the matter. We will not hear what I said. 
He that moveth with the wise becometh what? Wise. But the companion of fools shall be what? Strong. You want to excel in anything, look for people that are excelling in it. Do you know what you did in school? Some of us, look for those, you are not first. Go and look for those people that are always first. Make them your best friend. You will get there, even if you are not first, you will be second. True of us. You are carrying my third. But you now go and join the back benchers. No chance. And at the end of the term, <laughs> they are 31 and your position is 32. <laughs> And you're wondering. And the funny thing that you might be reading, you know, what they're reading are this. Um. Because what they're reading is not in the curriculum. <laughs> Has it happened to you before? Yes, I'm not just in school now. After reading, you come to the exam, you're wondering what happened. <laughs> because you didn't attend lecture, you are reading OP. <laughs> A friend of mine taught me something I'll never forget. He said, Medicine is known to unknown. When you are reading, start with the lecture's notes. Start with, that's why it's good to attend lecture. You may not need to write anything, but attend to get direction of what to what read. There are some, is that their note, ancient note, that diary they be using since 1925. That is what they will set. They will not set any other thing. They are not planning to read any other thing. So if you like, yeah, give them current information, you will fail with distinction. True or false? How many of you experienced it? So is that their handout that they will set and nothing else? Then there are some smart guys. If you give them their note, you will fail. You must give them something to make them think. And that's how study is going now. I told you who's going to be a master's. He gave them back what they gave him. They said, we'll see you for plagiarism. He said, but this is what you said now. He said, man, we're not recycling information here. We brought you here so we can think. Yeah. Yeah, they have to go and repeat the assignment. So you must study your lecturer. Is somebody hearing me now? Yeah. Is somebody hearing me now? No. So yeah. You must study your lecturer. Know his pattern. Know what he wants. That's why if you want to pass, go to the people that have passed before. And find out how they pass. Don't go to the people that are failed that are complaining about the man. They don't know how to pass. Hello. If you follow their, their advice, what will happen to you? You will fail with distinction. You want to marry. It's people that are divorced that are advising you. You know where you're going to now. It's Nollywood that is advising you. It's your, 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 your uncle in the village that has not married at 75 that is advising you. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, move with the right people. The last one, number 10. Why are many people still poor? Because many like depending on others instead of what? Walking. There are people that like begging. Have you met them before? Have you met them before? They like to beg. Somebody comes to you, he needs money, you say there's work available. He runs away. Some even get angry with you. Some even insult you. Yes, we've we met those kind of things. They will insult you. The pastor, I'm dying of hunger. I need money. Oh, come and walk in the crutch. I'm not designed for this kind of work. They yeah, now have a design. No problem. I'm not going to design it. There is dignity in labor. Is somebody hearing me now? If you need money, you should be ready to do anything. We have done all, all manner of things. We have carried blood. We have loaded tipper. We have packed sand. We have mixed you know, concrete. We have sold cards. There's nothing we've not done. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 14. Wow. Give me King James. Wise men lay up what? Knowledge. But the mouth of the fool is near to destruction. I'm not sure that's what I want, but. But you get the message. Do you get the message? Now, let me round up this way. Jesus was teaching us to value giving to him or to spiritual authority and his representatives, not just only giving to the poor. 
If you want to go up, you must learn to give up. But you should also learn to give down so that you don't go down. So honoring is giving up. Someone say honoring. Honoring, honoring God things like tithing. So it's your pastor's life. You're giving up. It makes you to go up. Giving to the poor is giving down. What it does is that it maintains you. That's why the Bible says that he that giveth to the poor, lendeth to the Lord, he will repay. He will repay you what you gave. He didn't say he will increase. But when you see the blessings on giving to spiritual authority, is exponential. You see the blessings on tithing, is exponential. Windows of heaven will pour out and give you blessing you will not have room to what? To receive. Is somebody with me now? So you must learn to give up to go up. Tell anybody you must learn to give up to go up. You must learn to honor spiritual authority that God has blessed you with. Now you're pastor. Now you're leader. You must learn to honor them because when you do, grace comes on you that multiplies you. So you must prioritize giving to them. After giving to God, in God's value system, they're next. Yes, you must also give to the poor and help people. But the truth is that the poor you always have with you. But these people, you may not always have the opportunity to bless them. So maximize that opportunity. Tell them about maximize that opportunity. For instance, if your pastor's birthday is coming, maximize it. His birthday doesn't happen every year. Every day of the year. Maximize it. You see an opportunity to be a blessing to him. Maximize it. You don't know how long you're going to have that pastor there. It's, why he's there is the time for you to get the grace that is on his life. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Okay, let's run now. Matthew 11 verse 5. The good news is preached to the poor. When they were asking Jesus, you know, I wish I had time. You know, what are the signs that you are the best? I said the blind receive their sight, the leg walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. And the poor what have the good news what preached to them. So the gospel of prosperity is part of the gospel. I know many people say a lot of things, but the good news is tell you about the good news is preached to the poor. Let's look at Matthew, Mark chapter 12, verse 42. Very fast. Mark 12, 42. Is it Matthew? It's still the same. But this is the story of a widow that was given, you know. That's not really what I'm looking for. But tell you about the good news is preached to the poor. So what's God's will to the poor? God's will for the poor is to give generously. Okay, yeah, I think it's okay. There's a reason why I put up this scripture. Number one, this woman was poor, but God recorded his her sacrificial giving. That your poor does not mean you should not give. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Because when you give, you see, God told me something so ago that giving is like a rope. When you are, somebody drops into a well, the deeper the well, the longer the rope, true or false. So when you are deeper in poverty, the more you have to give to bring yourself out. Yes. Because every move you make, you're coming out. As you're giving, you're coming out. As you're giving, you're coming out. As you're giving, you're coming out. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So that's why the poor needs to give. That's why the Bible recorded this. That the woman gave everything and God blessed her. The widow of Zerifah gave everything and God sustained her. Because people think that the poor should not give. If they don't give, they will stay poor. Because until you give, you will not receive. To give more and receive more. And give more and receive more. And give more and receive more. You're coming out. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Hello, are you here? Yeah. Are you sure? Okay. So what is God's the good news? To the, what's God's will for the poor? To give generously and give their way out of poverty. To walk hard and walk their way out of poverty. To pray hard and pray themselves out of what? Poverty. But notice I put prayer last. Prayer works after you have given and then you go out and walk and then you pray for the work to produce. Paul planted Apollos what? Water. And God did what? God did what? No planting, no watering, no increase. You're not planting, you're not watering, God is not committed to you. Remember this is a covenant. Tell anybody it's a covenant too. Tell anybody it's a covenant too. Jesus preached good news to the poor. Matthew 11, verse 5. If you want to get the context, you can read from 4 to 6. Jesus preached good news to the poor. Please, we need to go very fast. 
He said it again, the blind receive their sight, and the gospel is preached to the poor. Luke chapter 7, verse 22. This was John the Baptist. He said, what's the sign you are the Messiah? He's giving him the different things the Messiah is meant to do. One of the things is to eradicate poverty. Look at it again towards the end. The dead are raised, and to the poor the gospel is what? It's preached. Say, go your way. They were asking him, what are the signs? He said, go your way and answer John the Baptist. Tell John that what you have seen, the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed. The, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the someone say, and the poor, and the poor. to the poor, the good news, the gospel is what is preached. So if we don't preach, you see why we run empower. If we don't empower people, our gospel is not complete. Why do you preach about money? It's part of the gospel. In fact, Jesus talked more about money than he talked more about holiness. Go and check your Bible. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 4 verse 18, please, very fast. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to what? The poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set that liberty to them that are bruised. What was Jesus echoing? He was echoing Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 to what? 7. That is the mandate of the preacher. And that was the mandate of Jesus. To show the poor how to get out of their poverty. So if Jesus preached to the poor, we should do so today. True or false? True or false? The good, now, what is the good news to the poor? The good news to the poor is, cheer up, you don't have to be poor anymore. There is a way out. Someone said there is a way out. Someone said there is a way out. That's why we are studying what we are studying. The school of kingdom wealth. There is a way out. For instance, these 10 things will show you why people are poor. If you do the opposite, you'll be rich. Did you hear what I said? Those 10 things that I say, those 10 attitudes of poor people, if you do the opposite, what will you be? You'll become rich. So take all those things and do the opposite. If you're doing that, stop those negative things in your life. And you're going to grow in wealth. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. So the good news to the poor is that you can give your way out. You can believe your way out. You can dream your way out. You can walk your way out. You can pray your way out. And everybody say, Amen. I will end this discussion by giving you five financial scriptures I want you to go and meditate on. Begin to meditate on them. Faith comment by what? Hearing and hearing. Begin to meditate on Begin to dream them. Begin to declare them. Begin to act them. And you're going to see yourself come out in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of God is what? Risen upon you. And in fact, read the whole of Isaiah 60. Because it's your season to shine. Tell your neighbor, it's your season to shine. He said, verse, verse 2. Please, very fast, fast verse. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, cross darkness of people. For the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. Verse 3. Very fast, please. Very fast. And the Gentiles shall come to your life, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Tell your neighbor, kings are coming to you. Verse 4. Lift up your eyes round about, and look, they gather towards you, they come to thee. Their son shall come from afar, and thy daughter shall be lost at your side. Verse 5. Then thou shalt see and flow together. And thy heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted to thee. The forces of the Gentiles that shall come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. I see the abundance of nations coming to you in the name of Jesus. And seeing the forces, what are you talking about? Forces of Gentiles, talking about money coming to you in the name of Jesus. Nobody hearing me today will stay poor in the name of Jesus. Then Psalm 112, verse 2 and verse 4. The Bible says, concerning the righteous man, that wealth and riches are what? In his house. So wake up everyone and say, wealth and riches are in my house. I am being enriched. Money is coming my way. Someone say, money is coming my way. Wealth and riches are in my house. This is the good news to the poor. You might have an empty house to who, who Keep declaring it, that house will fill up. That's how this church was filled up. 
That's how all the houses I believe were filled up. I will wake up 4 a.m. and begin to prophesy. Wealth and riches are in this. And what is wealth and riches? Property and money. I see my fridge here. Father, I receive it. I see my bed here. Father, I receive it. I see this. I see this. And within, before you know it, that room is filled. That building is filled. That's how this house was. These things you are seeing in this church was dreamed. Do you remember when we were still talking about TV? It was a dream. Do you remember? It's a reality. Tell your neighbor, you must dream. They must come to pass. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you having all sufficient may have abundance for every good work. Lift your hands and say, in the name of Jesus. I will be so blessed that we will have abundance for every good work and every charitable donation. If you believe it, shout a living amen. amen. Read these things every day. Believe them. Declare them. Act like them. You will experience them. And everybody say amen. amen. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the cost of the law. Be made a cost for us, for it is really cost is anyone that hangs on the tree. Verse 14. That the blessings of what? Abraham may come upon the Gentiles, that we may receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Lift your hands, everyone jump on your feet. Say, In the name of Jesus, Amen. my father Abraham was rich. I will be rich too. I am expanding. I am increasing. I am seeing wealth. I am multiplying. If you believe it, shout in the Amen. And you'll experience it. So I'll say good news to the poor. This is good news to the poor. You don't need to stay poor again. There's a way out. Tell anybody there's a way out. Last scripture, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Oh, there's even another one I'm forgetting. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God of our Father Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all what? Spiritual blessings in heaven, please. Can you give me NIV? Lift up your hand and say, I have been blessed in the heavenly places. I am a blessed man. I am blessed in the spiritual realm. From now I'm going to bring them into the physical realm. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Can you just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost? Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Can we read it together? One, two, go. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became what? Poor. That you through his poverty might become what? Rich. The cross was a place of exchange. Jesus became poor that you will be rich. From today, the yoke of poverty is broken off your life in the name of Jesus. I say it's broken off your life in the name of Jesus. Whenever you see him on the cross without clothes, it's so that you can have clothes. I hear what I'm saying. Whenever you see him naked, it's so that you can be clothed with wealth. I hear what I'm saying. There was an exchange. Someone said there was an exchange on the cross. My poverty was taken and his riches were released. Thank you, Jesus. Can you lift up your hands and begin to thank the Lord? Jesus has paid the price for you to be rich. Jesus has paid the price for you to prosper. You cannot live otherwise. The most so to prokoto shikipata. Can you pray the Holy Ghost everywhere? Just pray the Holy Ghost. Pray the Holy Ghost. Pray the Holy Ghost. Pray the Holy Ghost. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Just thank you. Thank you for paying the price. Thank you for paying the price. Thank you for carrying my poverty. The way He carried your sickness is the way He carried your poverty. He carried it away so you will not carry it again. Thank you for carrying my poverty. Thank you for carrying my debt. I will not be indebted again. My debts are paid. My debts are paid. My debts are paid. Thank you for carrying my lack. Lord, thank you for carrying our debts. Thank you for carrying our lack. We take that lack, we place it on the cross. I want you to be able to carry your poverty and place it on the cross. Carry your lack and place it on the cross. Carry your joblessness and place it on the cross. Shatta brako to shkepata kala braga do shkepa. Rezole braga do shkepa la kona ma kone brako do broko do shkepa kama. And from the cross begin to receive your blessings. You have been blessed in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Begin to receive abundance. Lord, we receive abundance. We receive kingdom abundance. We receive the 
world of God. We receive the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We receive that which is ours. 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 Orobo shete kepa in cattle on a thousand hills is my father's. Mo soto kopo kodosh kepa to kopo kodosh kepa ya. Lebrege dos kepo kodosh kepa kodosh kepa kodosh ke. Oh, the righteous man, wealth and riches. I begin to pray those scriptures. Wealth and riches are in my house. From today, Lord, I receive properties. I receive wealth in my house. I receive the properties I need. I receive the beds. I receive the chairs. I receive the quality of things. The vehicles I need. In this church, we receive the equipment we need. We will not lack again. We will not lack again. Wealth and riches are in this house. Begin to call for the wealth and riches that I have. The Bible says we serve a God that raises the dead and collect things that be not. I don't know what you want to see in your life. Open your mind up, begin to call it forth, begin to call it forth. Lord, we call all our debts clear, 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 clear. Supernaturally, 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 supernaturally. We decree supernatural debt cancellation. We decree supernatural debt cancellation. We decree supernatural debt cancellation. We decree supernatural death cancellation for everybody here today. In the name of Jesus, your debts are cancelled. They are cancelled. They are cancelled. In the name of Jesus. Where at the cross is a place of exchange. He bore our poverty and released wealth. Finally, lift up your hands. Say in the name of Jesus, I address every force against my finances. You are bound in the name of Jesus. Can you open your mind and begin to bind them? I rebuke the beasts of the marshes. I scatter the men that love war. Every force against my prosperity. Everything fighting money from coming to me, you are bound. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you, Lord. We bind, we rebuke the beasts of the marshes. I want you to begin to address it. I don't know what you are trusting God for. Begin to bind the hand of the devil off that money. What do you want for that your project? What do you want for your school? What do you want for your home? Say that we bind you. We Take your hands of our money. We break your hold. We break your hold. I break your hold of that. 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 Now begin to release the angels of God. Go and get what we need. The Bible says, Money answereth all things. There's an angel called money. He answers. Bora Bashote Pregetoska. Evele Prokotoski Pat the Great Soko Prokotoski Pat. Celebrate. Give them time. Give them time. Reso Pregetoski Palo Prokotoski Patu. Reto Prokotoski Pregetoski Pata. Reprego will break the yoke of the enemy of that resource. We break the yoke of the enemy of that resource. We break the yoke of the enemy of that resource. Maso, we break the yoke of the enemy of that resource. We command flow. We command the flow. Open your mouth and begin to pray. You want to see money by the hand of the devil of your money and release the angels to bring it. So poco poco toshke pato poco poco toshke. Rata praka toko poco toko poco. Whatever you buy on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Say that we bind you of our money. 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 Thank you, Father. Lift up your hands. Say, Father, thank you for sending your son to carry my poverty and release wealth from me. From today, I will leave your word. I will live in this experience of divine wealth. I will obey your principles for wealth creation. And Lord, I know from now, my life will never be the same again. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Did you receive that word? Can you put your hands together for the Lord? Just give him some praise. <laughs> Tell your neighbor from today, poverty is eradicated from my life. I, I feel the anointing. Lift up your hands. Say, From today, I will no longer be poor. I refuse to be poor. I will walk in the riches of God from today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen.